Girls Lizzie and Hannah, it's so lovely to see you both. Are you both okay? Yeah, just about. <laughs> I'm doing fine. I'm just enjoying time at home. I've never been at home for this long in about 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it must be really nice. I'm, 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 you know, it must be so nice to just have to look after yourself and Nathan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and not have to worry much. about the school stuff. Yeah. So ask Lizzie, how is the homeschooling going? <laughs> yeah, I definitely wouldn't call it homeschooling. I would like to take that away from the teachers that they normally go and see. <laughs> it's uh, trying to keep the learning going, which they're doing really, really well. Um, Phoebe's amazing. She would sit and learn for 24 hours a day. And Phoebe has got the attention span of a nap. Uh, Bobby's got the attention span of a nap. Um, and just wants to go on the iPad mm. for 12 hours a day. If I let him, he would actually sit on that for 12 hours a day. So I'm trying to block all the bad things and just put like learning apps on and things. Because they learn differently, don't they? But it's challenging. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm enjoying the days where I'm not doing the teaching. Put it that way. <laughs> I can understand that. So Hannah, how are things with you? I mean, are you able, I know we're not allowed to go out, but are you still able to train? Yeah, so my training hasn't, hasn't actually really changed that much. I'm still training uh, six days a week, still doing six chair sessions a week, two gym sessions a week. Um, my chair sessions are variations of what I would be doing on the track, so a lot of sprint work right now. Um, and I've managed to get little bits of gym stuff so I've got like a couple of dumbbells and a pull-up bar and um, I'm just making it work really but um, you know what it's, it's like I said it's just nice to actually be at home normally this time of year I'm, I'm in Switzerland this month and then I think next month I was planning to be in Poland and then obviously off to Tokyo so um, it's been a massive change but I've actually quite enjoyed being in my house. <laughs> <laughs> and the weather's been so great which certainly helps doesn't it? Oh, massively, you know, I think it's helped everyone get out and use their one hour of exercise. Um, I know I'm trying to use the local roads as much as I can in that hour just to get a bit of outside pushing in. Um, and the roads are so quiet, you know, normally I can't go out and, and just push up and down, them, but they're, they're absolutely dead. So it's actually great for my hill training. <laughs> can I just ask, having obviously having the Paralympics, everything cancelled, everything on hold, does that change your perspective and, 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 your, and your training schedule? Um, so my training schedule hasn't changed that much, um, mostly because we're in a, a really weird situation where we don't actually know what we're training for right now. You know, we, we don't know if we're going to compete this year at all. Potentially at the moment, my season might start in September, so I, I still have to be ready for that. Um, but that might also not happen. So we're, we're training as if it hopefully will at the moment. Um, and then every time we get a new update of, of you know, this race is cancelled or this meet might go ahead, then we, we change it accordingly. Um, but the biggest challenge has just been mentally, you know, this is the biggest year for any athlete this is a year that we build up for for four years so I kind of came into this in January I went out to Australia for two months nearly um, and you know was training really really well getting the miles in pushing really well and then obviously came back in great shape and and, and everything's kind of just disappeared uh, and in your head you're like oh well is there any point carried on? You know, what am I training for this year? Should I just have a year off? Because some athletes are doing that, you know, they've just got up. I can't train, I'm not going to train. Um, but, you know, I've got nothing better to do, to be totally honest. So I'm just <laughs> carrying on and hoping that next year it'll kind of make me that little bit quicker and, and try to put it in that positive mindset of, you know what, this is extra time to be fitter, to be quicker, to make sure that next year's Paralympic Games is going to be the best that anyone's ever seen. Lizzie, obviously this virus, this coronavirus has affected absolutely everything in life. I mean, you with the foundation, with Danny's foundation, is that all on hold or are you still raising funds? Are you still keeping awareness out there? Yeah, pretty much everything that I do is, has been on hold since uh, a week before we actually went into lockdown. Um, there's been some like major sporting events that I was due to perform at. Um, and yeah, they've all obviously all, all had to stop them with very, very good reason. And the charity stuff, um, the ball was, is booked for September, but obviously with everybody's plans over the summer are all being pushed back. So that's a bit of a worrying time as well as to sort of our main event that might have to be postponed or pushed back even further. So it's just all a bit up in the air really as to, as to what's going to happen. But as much as possible, people are still 
you know the 2.6 challenge I don't know if you've seen a lot a lot yeah, of that I've been, yeah. I've been busy running because like Hannah said it's mental health that's the the, the key in all this I, I really worry about people's mental health through this and the effect that it's going to have long term on the mental health service um, I really hope the government think about that and really plow some money into getting getting that getting some help into that um but yeah, I've been doing the 2.6 challenge for the RFL Benevolent Fund and the DJ Fund, um, trying to get at least 26 miles in a week, if I can, Impressive. with the running. <laughs> yeah, which I'm absolutely loving. I've, I stopped running for a while, for quite a while, but with being able to get out, like Hannah says, on the streets and there's nobody driving. Well, mm. there's very little drivers on the road, so it's just heavenly. I've been out this morning and, and done a 10K and just tried to try to enjoy the scenery and the beautiful area of Yorkshire that I live in. Mm. Um, but yeah, things are still going along with the charity. People are still raising money and doing as much as they can. Uh, but every charity is struggling and every charity is being affected massively. And marathons cancelled and events cancelled. And it's a scary time, isn't it? But you just have to do what you can do and just hope that it's not as affected as much as, as we think it's going to be. Well, out of all this nonsense and, and something good has come out of it, the fact that people are connecting. I think we, I don't think any of us have spent so much time on Zoom calls, FaceTime, etc. I mean, I know the three of us all know one another, but yourself and Hannah, you're both, you're both very good friends. In fact, I think Hannah is patron of the charity, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, she is. Very, very proud patron of the DJ Fund <laughs> and a very good friend. We just seem to be at the same events, don't we, Han? We like literally... <laughs> turn up and we're like hey <laughs> quite nice though it's quite nice to always have a face that you know and 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 to support the same things you know we're, we're both really proud yorkshire girls really proud halifax girls so um just to be able to bounce off each other i think and discuss ideas and 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 you know try and raise awareness or raise money or whatever it might be that we're trying to do we've, we've got each other there to support each other so it's quite nice mm. how, how did you actually get together how did you get how did you meet one another or where did we meet lizzie <laughs> I was literally just trying to think then actually. Oh, I was singing at the Halifax RLFC actually for the Calderdale, what was the what was the event? I can't remember what it was called. It was an anniversary or something. Um and you were there with Ian, your ma our manager back then. Right. Um and um yeah, I actually then became a uh, Lizzie, your sound's gone. Oh, have we lost Lizzie can you every event together? Yeah. She's back. <laughs> Lizzie, you're on mute. She became bit. such a, a big supporter of the DJ Fund. She'd come into the ball. She'd been to the ball every year with a lovely mum. And yeah, we, we went from there and then became ambassadors of the Yorkshire um, Ambulance Service, so we start a heart. Right. Um, so we've been, we do that together as well. Mm -hmm. um, so again, another, another event that's going to be massively affected by what's going on now and, you know, hundreds of thousands of kids have been trained in CPR so we need to try and keep that going this year if we can um by online by somehow I don't know I don't think we'll be able to do a massive zoom uh CPR conference but you know somehow trying to keep that message out there because you know I can't remember the exact percentage but it's a very very high percentage of cardiac arrest happening in the home mm -hmm. so and, and I know from having a close friend working at the Coldale Royal that last week they were inundated with patients that hadn't come to hospital because they were told not to and have ended up having heart attacks and strokes and awful, awful mm. things because they've been told to stay away. Mm. Um, and, you know, people aren't as trained at home. People aren't as confident with the CPR. People might not know where the local defib is. So I guess a big, a big thing for us is to try and get that out and keep pushing that so people are aware. Um, and if they need anything, they need any training, we can do that online. We can, we can help anybody that wants it. Lizzie, you mentioned how important, obviously, I mean, our physical health is, but also oh, mental health as well, our mental health. Hannah, if I can ask you, how do you, because obviously with, you know, so many events cancelled, as we mentioned, the marathon, any, every sporting event has been cancelled. How do you inspire and keep going young people who still want to achieve and exercise and just getting out there is so important. We've been told time and time again for everyone's mental health. 
So I've been approached a lot at the moment just to send little video messages so that teachers can use them to send to their pupils to encourage them to, to you know, stay positive in this time. Um, I've been putting together a home workout, so I've got one coming out shortly um, that's an accessible one so people can do it sat down um, and also using uh, things that they can find around the, ha around the house. So, you know, whether it's jogging on a spot or using some tins of soup to do some <laughs> Uh, whatever it is it's about making things accessible but really it's, it's you know using a social media presence using whatever presence you have really to um to just encourage people to use that hour that you have to go outside you know we've got absolutely amazing weather use it mm. go and enjoy it um and just communicate with people you know you said all these all this technology that we've suddenly found zoom and house party i don't think i've ever spoken to so many people in <laughs> um I'm, I'm like a I always got some kind of call going on and it's absolutely amazing you know the people that I've managed to reconnect with that you know not that I don't usually have time for but usually it's like oh well I'm here this day and then you're working that day and we just never have time to meet up and suddenly it's like well we're both at home let's have yeah. a chat um it's encouraging people to just do that you know don't pick up your phone and send a text pick up your phone and make a call because actually that could make someone's day um especially an older person a person who's in isolation on their own think about those so yeah it's about using what's around us and it's about being a community at the moment I think it's about just thinking of everyone and you know I know me and my boyfriend we live close to his grandparents so anytime that we you know we haven't been able to get an online shopping slot like so many people um <laughs> every time we've had to go to the supermarket it's just it's just ringing those people and just saying you know do you need something I'm here we can drop it on your doorstep you know just think of others even if they're your next door neighbor mm. And Lizzie, how are you inspiring all those wonderful singers out there? Are you still keeping? Because again, that's music is therapy. Yeah, it absolutely is. I did um, I did a concert from the kitchen a couple of weeks ago, and there was over I think it was over twenty five thousand tuned in and watched the concert and have watched it since. It's still on my Facebook page if anybody wants to watch it. Um, but yeah, I just keep kept getting a lot of messages about um entertaining and are you going to do a concert and quite a few people have done some live singing um online on facebook live so i've been singing on a thursday evening i sang this thursday for captain tom for his 100th birthday mm -hmm. and clapped the nhs and then sang um we'll meet again after so again that's on my facebook as well so i was asked by uh, my local community um, the group that run our Facebook page and things, would you sing and would you get the speakers outside? And so the whole village could hear and they all kind of walked round to my street and were joining in and listening and brought the kids round and my two were running a muck in front that you'll see on the video, <laughs> screaming and, you know, distracting everybody. But it's lovely and, you know, they even sort of, are we clapping tonight, mommy? And, you know, it, it's, it's magical. And I'm still managing to teach some pupils online as well, because obviously I teach singing as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, a lot of parents have sort of said, oh, I, I, they didn't sort of ask me. And I've, I've asked them, you know, if you're interested, it's available. And a lot of parents have sort of said, gosh, you don't know how much they, they need this. And a, a bit more, a bit of structure still there. You know, they used to come in once a week to me and they're not being able to do that. But, you know, it's so good being able to do this and still, talk to uh, you, my pupils and talk to friends and talk to people that need it because there's a lot of people that are isolating alone um and you know i whinge I'm, I'm not whinging about the kids but it is hard but i can't imagine not having them to keep mm -hmm. me busy and you know keep me distracted and drive me mental because <laughs> it makes the day go quicker <laughs> it really does and i think i put something on it a few days ago and um, like oh it must be it must be so nice my my friends that are just looking after themselves and one of my friends messaged back saying oh Lizzie it's so lonely and it broke my heart and I, and I genuinely hadn't thought about it like that I just thought wow it must be so relaxing just looking at these twelve <laughs> and being able to watch Whatever. a series on Netflix without being interrupted but do you know what it's it's I wouldn't have it any other way it's mm. you know I can't imagine how lonely it is for people and uh, how desperate they are for that hour of exercise and to get out and clear the head and you know even talk to somebody from a distance um must be must be great for them because they, I, can't, I just can't imagine how lonely some people must be i think one thing none of us tend to know what day of the week it is at the moment oh, kind of if it wasn't for this watch i wouldn't have a clue what day of the week it is or the day i'm not using a diary which i normally live by um you know I'm, I'm literally setting alarms to make sure i'm getting on the zoom calls like hannah says i'm on a quiz 
like three I think Saturday night we had three zoom quizzes we got to bed at about 3 a.m but they're brilliant <laughs> they're brilliant I yeah, think how clever we're all going to be when all this is over. <laughs> of course, this weekend is a very important weekend because we've got uh, VE Day on Friday when we'll meet again, such a poignant song, um, for, for this particular um, 75 years since victory in Europe. And of course, a bank holiday weekend for us, which has been slightly moved to celebrate the occasion. So Hannah, have you got any plans? Are you staying out or staying in? <laughs> Oh, I'll be staying in. I'll still be training. Uh, I don't get a bank holiday as an athlete. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> playing. I've got nothing else to do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think we're gonna we're gonna put some flags up outside the house and uh, probably have a little bit of picnic in the sunshine. Um, but you know, I think it is important for everyone to remember that we are still in lockdown. So please stay in. Please stay safe. Please save our NHS. Please just be sensible because it is a bank holiday. I know it's so tempting to want to go visit your family and go to the seaside and do all those lovely things but we're so so close and there's no point in wasting all the hard work we've done so let's just stay in and, and celebrate with whoever you've got around you and i'm sure lizzie you reiterate those uh, those thoughts of hannah's absolutely i've been i've been out for the last couple of days on our we try and go out in twos and take the kids out separately but the streets are definitely getting a little bit busier um, and as lovely as that is, and, and then the stats are coming down and things, and, and they're saying the Prime Minister said we've flattened the curve, it is very scary um, that people, you know, even even myself, I've done things and I've thought, oh, I've forgotten, you know, I've, I've got a bit closer to someone or I've, you know, basically just sort of relaxed it myself. And it is quite scary thinking, gosh, is everybody thinking the same? And then all this work that we've done and all this time that we've spent indoors and, and worked super, super hard. Um, you know, we don't, we don't want um, another, another outbreak, desperately not. And I know, I know there's a, a couple of other countries struggling with that. So it is quite scary, but I think it's just so important to just stick, carry on with what we're doing. It's working. Whatever we're doing is working. So let's stick with it. Stay in, stay safe, and just, just a little bit longer, hopefully. Well, Lizzie and Hannah, thank you so much for speaking to me and to, uh, to all the, everyone who's listening um, and uh, hearing you today, inspiring them as always. Stay safe, keep well, look after those lovely families of yours, and we'll, we'll certainly see you the other side. Take care and thank you. Thank Bye. you. Thank <laughs> you.